to record. Okay. Sorry, I was um, <laughs> deep in uh, doing something with the proposal. So, good. Go on. Uh, good morning, all. Uh, I'm Chaturangi Shalika. I'm going to present the paper Transformers in Time Series, a survey. Uh, this is a survey paper which has been added to archive. But it has uh, quite a good number of citations as up to now. Uh, and also it covers a broad range of the usage of transformers in time series applications. Uh, so that's why I have selected this paper for today's presentation. Uh, this is authored by authors in Alibaba Group. and. Shanghai Geo University. Uh, so before uh, proceeding to the paper, I would like to give you some basic introduction for the time series data. Uh, so time series data is a sequence of data points that are collected over time intervals which are ranging from milliseconds to years. Uh, so examples are uh, stock prices, rainfall measurements, annual retail sales, monthly subscribers, and heartbeats per minute, which are measured as ECG signals. So what are the special features of time series data uh, that makes this modality different from other modalities like text or images? The first most important one is the variables in a time series may exhibit seasonality or periodicity. Uh, so this refers to the repeating cycles over a specific period that are in a time series, uh, such as a day, week, month, or quarter of the year, etc. For example, we can see sales of a business exhibiting seasonality with, the, with its earnings peaking during the festive seasons. And secondly, the time series variables may have a trend over time which refers to the increasing or decreasing values in a given time series. And also, uh, the data in a time series will have serial connection between its subsequent observations. And finally, the data will almost always have an irregular component, which is referred to as nodes. Uh, so the given figure uh, depicts the time series of uh, popularity change of database models from 2013 up to now. Uh, so going towards the paper, uh, so as we all know, uh, transformers have already achieved excellent performances in NLP and computer vision areas. And also it's being invading other disciplines like reinforcement learning. Uh, this has sparked a lot of interest within the time series community. Uh, so time series uh, may have many benefits, uh, but one that makes them particularly appealing for time series modeling is uh, their cap capacity to capture long range dependencies and interactions. Uh, this has led to many interesting advancements in variety of time series applications to address its specific challenges in recent years. But uh, we can see that it still remains to be a challenge on how to effectively model the long range and short range multi-resolution temporal and also spatial dependencies and how to capture the specific features simultaneously. So this paper examines the development of time series transformers in two major perspectives as network structure and applications. And it follows by empirical uh, evaluation strategies conducted and discussion. And finally, the paper ends by giving some possible future directions for time series transformer. Firstly, the paper starts by giving some preliminaries of the transformer, starting from the starting standard uh, Wendler transformer and then describes on the input encoding and positional encoding mechanisms forward by the multi-head attention and feed forward and receivable networks. So uh, this is the major contribution of this paper, which presents the taxonomy of transformers in time series. Mainly, 
the authors have identified the contribution of the trans time series transformers in two perspectives as network modifications and application domains as divided further as in figure. So I would go ahead describing each of the components in the taxonomy uh, and give you a brief idea on how the concept of the transformer has been modeled in using with time series. Firstly, uh, let's see how the positional encoding has been achieved in time series. Uh, so in positional encoding, uh, they discuss on how to encode the positions of the input time series into the transformers. Uh, so uh, a typical design uh, would be uh, vectorizing each positional data first and then injecting them uh, into the model as an additional input alongside the input time series. Uh, so they have identified three ways on how to obtain these vectors in time series modeling with the transformers. Uh, the first one is the standard vanilla positional encoding. Uh, uh, some authors, uh, some researchers have used uh, this standard vanilla positional encoding in their applications. Uh, so uh, they were able to some extract some positional information from the time series, but they were unable to exploit some important features of time series like the trend patterns. Uh, so this method was less expressive and adaptive in using with the time series. Uh, so uh, to eliminate such limitations, the learning learnable positional encoding mechanism was established. It includes uh, learning the appropriate positional embeddings itself from the time series. Uh, some of the examples are uh, introducing an embedding layer in transformer that can learn the positional embeddings and also using LSTM network-like uh, learning mechanism to encode the embeddings. They were more adaptive and flexible than the earlier method. Uh, the third method was using time scan encoding. So as you all may know, uh, time series have specific time stamps, uh, including calendars, time stamps like uh, seconds, minutes, hours, and also year, and also special time stamps like holidays and events. Uh, so they can be quite informative in real applications, but they are hardly used in standard vanilla transform like mechanisms. There have been several implementations of time series that uh, have taken the time step encoding within their mechanisms like informer, auto form, and fed former. And secondly, let's see how the attention module has been modified in using with the time series. Uh, so here, uh, the main aim that the uh, researchers have tried to focus is to reduce the quadratic time and memory complexity in the standard vanilla transformer. Uh, so they have identified two mechanisms in achieving this. Uh, the first one is uh, some of the researchers have explicitly introduced a sparsity bias into the attention mechanism uh, where some application variants like log trans, they have used a log sparse mask and also pyroformer like applications. So in figure four, you can see how self attention has been modified uh, in using with the uh, log trans transformer variant. Here, as you can see in the full self attention, uh, current cell uh, interacts with the each and every cell in the past, including the self layer. But in Logstar's self-attention, they have only uh, taken a subset of the indices uh, for the in to make the attention mechanism. Uh, this figure I have uh, grabbed from the uh, Logtrans original paper. And the second main mechanism is uh, exploring a low rank property of the self-attention mechanism, uh, where the informer and fed former like transformer variants have used uh, some Fourier uh, transform like mechanisms in order to maintain the attention mechanism. So in the given table, you can see the complexity comparison of the popular time series transformers. You can see the original standard transformer have order of 
L squared, where the L is the input time series length, and whereas the new time series transfer variants have subsequently reduced the complexity in terms of the time and memory. Uh, next, uh, let's see how the architectural level has been modified by the transformer variants. Here, the researchers have focused on the multi-resolution aspect of time series, and they have renovated the transformers on the architectural level. Uh, so some of the two of the examples I have given here, the first one is the informal transformer variant, uh, as shown in figure uh, five, uh, in the uh, encoder block of the uh, informer, they have inserted max pooling layers with stripe two in between the attention blocks that has led to down samples the time series into its half slice. Another example is the use of virtual transformer. They have used a pyramid attention module as shown in figure six uh, that includes the C array array, C array tree uh, based attention mechanism uh, where the finite scale correspond to the original time series and the nodes at the coarser represent series at the lower resolutions given time series. Uh, so, uh, uh, that's on about the network modifications have been modified by the uh, time series applications. Now let's see uh, how the application domain uh, has been concurred by the time series transformers. So here they have identified three main areas as uh, forecasting applications, anomaly detection applications, and classification related applications. Uh, now, firstly, I would go through uh, for the forecasting applications. Uh, the first application is the time series forecasting. As you may know, uh, forecasting is one of the most popular and a crucial application of time series. These are some of the examples where the transformers has been used in a time series forecasting. Here there are many applications and many words in these slides. I would describe you two major transformer variants in this area. The first one is the log trans transformer variant. Log trans is actually the first time series transformer variant introduced. Uh, they have introduced a, a convolutional self-attention mechanism. Uh, so uh, this is an image I have grabbed from the uh, log trans paper uh, as shown in the figure. Uh, I will explain what's in their transformer variant. Uh, this figure uh, actually shows the comparison between the uh, standard uh, canonical vanilla transformer and the conventional self attention they have proposed. Uh, so assume that we have a time series as plotted in figure A. Uh, it has varied time amplitudes that are ranging from low to high. So as in figure B here, if we use transformer with that have convolutional, convolutional kernel size one, then it may wrongly match the pointwise inputs of a time series as shown in figure A, and the transformer may confuse the self-attention module in terms of whether the observed value is an anomaly or a trend pattern or a change point. So to solve this kind of limitations, they have come up with the convolutional self-attention as shown in figure D, uh, which uses convolutional layers of size K, which slide one, to transform the input as shown in figure C into queries and keys. Uh, so they have identified this as a good mechanism to capture the multi-resolution aspect uh, of the time series. Uh, so next, I would uh, explain. Sorry, uh, if you please go back to the previous slide, I mean, if you please repeat, uh, it's not really understandable. So Q K Q V is there, and then uh, what? What is the new change they are proposing? Uh, they are proposing uh, to add convolutional layers with uh, size, panel size K, so that 
uh, they can capture the shape uh, in the time series accurately. If we use uh, conversational layers with kernel, same kernel size, then time series can capture the uh, shapes in a time series. The sorry, the uh, transformer cannot capture the different shapes in the time series. Okay, I mean, so okay, Qu qu query and k are vectors and uh, v is actually the matrix so we are applying convolution on v right i mean not on q and k uh yeah okay okay yeah. understood the Thanks. kernel size k has been applied for the uh, queries and keys without the values okay thanks thanks yeah so uh next uh, i would explain uh, about some interesting uh, transformer variant, uh, which is Aliformer. Uh, they are actually, they have used a knowledge guided attention mechanism uh, that has used uh, historical statistics and current factors and also future knowledge to forecast future sales. Uh, sorry, uh, here actually, uh, in terms of future knowledge, they mean uh, some product related and also platform related information like uh, future cost of an application or future uh, advertising investments or promotion activities, uh, likewise things. Uh, so uh, I would next explain about the spatial temporal and uh, event forecasting applications that has been uh, developed. So in uh, spatial temporal forecasting, uh, they mainly uh, consider, uh, they mainly extends the traditional time series forecasting for to capture the space and time dimensions. Uh, in short, uh, so they have used graph based net networks like graph neural networks, graphs convolutional networks to capture the spatial dependencies and transformer self attention module has been extended to capture the temporal dependencies in a time series. Uh, so next, uh, one of the major applications is event forecasting uh, that aims to predict the uh, times and marks of future events uh, given the history of the past events. Uh, so the applications self attention hoax processes uh, transformer hoax processes uh, they have uh, forecasted the future probability of occurring some of the events and next uh, anomaly detection is also a wide application area of time series forecasting uh, here what the mainly what past uh, some of the researchers have done is they have combined transformer with some other uh, network model like neural generative models like variational autoencoders and general generative adversarial networks and also graph based learning structures and also a gaussian prior association like structure uh, from using transformers in anomaly detection the early researchers have identified that uh, they have achieved much uh, accuracy than using normal LSTM methods um, that has been measured by the F1 scores. And also in the parallel computing uh, architecture in transformers, the anomaly detection was much able to achieve. So uh, uh, have you, Chaturangi, thought very specifically about applicability and relevance of these to our smart manufacturing project? Uh, yes, Dr. Shir. Uh, mm. So, uh, one major application I noticed is uh, the use of transformers in event forecasting. Uh, so, I have uh, had some glance on the paper where they have included here uh, in the references. So, uh, from those methods, we can use the some of the methods I uh, ex uh, explain like uh, self attention uh, hoax processes like things in our research and also uh, but, uh, this... but correct me if i'm wrong our need are not in forecasting our need are 
we are getting real time time series data from sensors and there happens to be an actual um, you know uh, uh, failure of some kind and we want to detect that that failure has occurred as soon as that occurs and then we want to use our work on causal knowledge graph to identify what those failure is and then we want to possibly use our uh, you know uh, uh, our in the sense uh, you know including everybody at AI Institute uh, work on possibly using planning uh, to come up with an alternative mechanism to fix the problem and move ahead. So that's a very broad research agenda we have. Um, I don't see uh, I don't see how this is framed as a forecasting issue. Uh, yes, Dr. Shed, but uh, from the technique, we can uh, improve uh, in our method also. Okay, so identification, you think you can adapt those techniques for actually identifying uh, those exceptions they occur. Yeah. So forecasting is, Dr. Shed, uh, you can see it as a prediction. Uh, so let's say, let's say that we have a time series data uh, for like two hours. Mm. Then if we sample the two hours into, let's say, uh, every minute, uh, let's say every 30 seconds, then uh, by forecasting, what we mean is that can we predict a failure or an event uh, like two seconds, uh, you know, two timestamps before uh, it happens. So th that's that's the goal. Yeah, but we, we're not, I'm not, I don't see, uh, you know, our problem being forecasting. Our problem is actual identification of uh, exception. Uh, certainly a sensor reports a uh, observation that is um, not in the range uh, that we have been seeing. Uh, yeah. And uh, you know, the di directionality of the part is wrong, let's as an example. So, uh, or, or that the grip uh, reports uh, unusual thing and that part has fallen down. So, yeah, so, that so ours is actually finding the exceptions in the data not forecasting that in two minutes something may happen or not happen. Right. So in that case, I think we are modeling anomaly. Um, so so yeah. an event is an anomaly here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I just want to talk about two things which I put as references. <clears throat> uh, the first reference is um, to a paper which kind of argues, do we really need deep learning methods, including transformers? <laughs> Um, and whether uh, for forecasting task uh, versus um, uh, classical methods, machine learning methods like um, um, uh, your random forest and uh, gradient boosting especially can actually do good. And they show that in many cases, uh, gradient boosting can actually do better than many of the transformer based approaches, just FYI. And uh, there, there are at least three tasks. So. Um, in the time-based things. One is forecasting, second is abnormality de detection. And uh, we just identified and uh, put out a paper based on data collection in power, which is we, what we call state identification. Um, so we collected for eight locations, uh, power data uh, using time series. And we try to identify what state that particular uh, organization or whatever is at different stages of time in an unsupervised way. So just to kind of show that uh, different uh, situations, and although this is good, um, and, and thanks Chaturangi for doing it, I just wanted to point out that uh, the fact that the deep learning is better than uh, the standard methods, right? It's still not a done deal. You may want to take a look at this. And Bharat is uh, the person who has been looking at this from different angles. Okay. Um uh, just a side question, we can move on after later on, but uh, Biplo, what, what any guess as to uh, relevance, uh, sort of similarity in the data that you have used here? Right? I guess this is for your project involving electrical uh, uh, network uh, with, um, uh, with with things on the manufacturing floor. Uh, it would it should be quite uh, similar. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, it depends on what kind of task it is. Okay, mm -hmm. so as uh, is being shown here, uh, there are three uh, problems which. Uh, Chaturangi is showing on the right-hand side application domain, mm. forecasting, anomaly detection, and classification. Mm. Okay. Forecasting and anomaly detection are standard problems. So uh, you, you one has to always start by why not ARIMA and standard methods. 
And then, of course, uh, the state of the art is in uh, other methods. Uh, so there is a lot of similarity. Yes. The classification depends on the application. And in our case, it was unsupervised problem. It's not a classification problem where, uh, for example, we have a sensor in the lab and we want to know occupancy, right? When is it? So we mm. don't know anything about occupancy, okay? Uh, and we want to know maybe in the middle of the night, there is a lot of occupancy or in the day and so on, right? So that's unsupervised uh, method. So not a classification. So there might, so my point is forecasting and anomaly detection can directly carry over. Uh, there might be uh, uh, application specific ones, which might be in the classification or clustering or uh, so on. So there might be more tasks. But uh, forecasting and anomaly detection are the standard ones. And uh, we have actually worked with a lot of this very recently. Yeah. Great. Thanks for the comment, Dr. Uh, uh, I think uh, so. We, we are yet to uh, explore the <coughs> so much with uh, our data uh, for the manufacturing domain. But uh, we also looked at you know, the Arima, like Marima, uh, then the random forest gradient boosting. So it was our observation too that uh, you know gradient boosting and the weighted gradient boosting <coughs> perform better than uh, uh, you know we tried some CNN based uh, approach and auto encode approach. Uh, they worked uh, so the gradient boosting method worked better compared to uh, the other methods. Yeah, and and this is a com very empirical area, so it depends on how much uh, missing data you have and all these characteristics. So uh, again, I'll encourage you to talk to Bharat, but uh, uh, it's, it's really um, just because we have done it doesn't mean that it applies to your thing, okay? Uh, for us, the missing data was all the way from uh, zero point some percent to 10%. And the more details are in the, in the paper as well as in our revised version, which you can have from Bharat. And Bharat, feel free to chime in. But my point is, sure. this is a very empirical thing. So you need to try out the cleaning methods. All these have an impact on yeah. your... Uh, my results. Yeah, uh, thanks, Dr. Diplo. And one other uh, major thing that I identified is that uh, using statistical methods uh, can seem achieve better performance, but when dealing with long term dependencies uh, in a very large data set, a statistical methods may not be able to achieve good performance. Uh, Completely yeah, possible. Completely possible. And that's why I was just saying that one needs to get uh, into the thing. So actually one of one, so one nice thing which you could have tried uh, Chaturangi was, you know, taking some of the sample data from this survey, I'm sure they might have put something and just tried that them out with the few models that they have. <laughs> yes, Dr. Fantastic, go on. Okay, so uh, going towards the next application domain cl classification, as uh, Dr. Biplo also said, classification is also one of the interesting application domain. Uh, so here, uh, many trans some transformer variants has been uh, modified <coughs> uh, to solve the classification issues, uh, like uh, somehow worked in uh, satellite-based image classification uh, and also some Many other application domains they have some gating mechanisms along with uh, along with the transformers. Uh, so also one point to note is that uh, there are uh, some kind of pre-trained transformers that has been invented. But uh, one of the limitation in transformers in time series is that uh, most of the uh, pre-trained transformers only. Uh, talk on classification tasks, uh, they have not uh, yet uh, fully uh, demonstrated their capabilities on other tasks that I have mentioned earlier. Uh, so then, uh, the authors have then conducted empirical studies on how the different algorithms uh, with different configurations work on a typical benchmark data set uh, like uh, ETT M2. Uh, they have taken uh, three experiments to uh, evaluate this. The first one is robustness analysis. Uh, so here, uh, as shown in table two, uh, they have compared the prediction results 
with increasing input lengths. Uh, so as the result, they have identified that the various transformer-based models have deteriorated quickly. Uh, as you can see, uh, when the model input length has 96 or 192, the transformer variants have mean, minimum mean squared errors. Uh, so the uh, authors have raised the question uh, that a lot of carefully designed transformers seem to be impractical in long-term forecasting stars uh, since they cannot effectively utilize the long input information. Uh, so they suggest that more works need to be done to fully utilize the long sequence inputs with the time series transformers. And then secondly, they have evaluated using the model size analysis. Uh, so here, the authors have compared the prediction results with different transfer models with various layer numbers. So as per the results in table three, uh, we can see that the shallowest transformer with three to six layers has achieved the minimum mean squared errors. Uh, so through this result, uh, the authors have raised the question about how to design a proper transformer architecture with players to increase the model accuracy and achieve better forecasting performance. The third uh, experiment they have done is seasonal trend decomposition analysis. Uh, simply, uh, seasonal trend decomposition decomposing is uh, decomposing a time series into three major parts spring, season, and the remainder component, which includes the residuals or noise. So as per the results in table four, they have conducted some ablation experiments. A seasonal trend decomposition has been able to significantly boost a model's performance by 50 to 80%, which uh, quite seem very uh, good to further investigate. And also then uh, finally, the authors do some valuable future research opportunities. This one is uh, introducing in the more inductive biases for time series transformers. Uh, so uh, as you may know, uh, standard vanilla transformer may also have some drawbacks. Uh, so one is that uh, it does not make any assumption about the data patterns or characteristics. Especially uh, the time series have uh, varying data patterns. So, as I stated in the beginning, uh, time series have some more uh, special characteristics like trend patterns, seasonality, and also uh, serial correlations like characteristics. Stuff. Thus, uh, one future direction is to consider more effective ways to in induce inductive biases into transformers based on these time series special characteristics. And also secondly, uh, transformers and graph neural networks for time series also would be a good future direction. Uh, so uh, one of the major, major problem uh, that can be arise in multivariate and also spatiotemporal time series is that uh, they may have high dimensionality. Uh, so especially this can be burdened in capturing relationships among the varied dimensions. Uh, so adapting graph neural networks to model the spatial de dependency and correlation among dimensions also would be a solution to solve this. Uh, so some of the recent studies also have been uh, investigated and their results also prove that uh, a significant performance improvements can be achieved in combining the graph based structures and transformers. So in future, it would, it might lead to better understanding of the spatial temporal uh, dependencies of time series and also the latent causality structures by using the graph neural networks. And also uh, introducing a pre-trained transformers for time series is also uh, would be a good uh, future opportunity. Uh, so as I explained earlier, uh, there's a lack of pre-trained transformers for time series. And the existing studies mainly focus on time series classifications. So therefore, it would be a good 
uh, investigation to develop a suitable pre-trained transfer models for other various tasks in time series. And also the fourth question is uh, the use of neural architecture search time series. Uh, neural architecture search or the task of automatically finding the optimized architecture for a neural network in terms of the embedding dimensions, uh, the number of heads or number of layers uh, has been researched in automating tra transformer design and in NLP and computer vision communities of incorporating those kind of uh, uh, modifications in transformers with time series would also provide good future directions. And also uh, this would be really of practical importance for industry scale time series data, uh, which would involve both high dimensional and long structures. So this also would be obviously an important future direction for time series transformer. I may have a live question. Um, so in our uh, manufacturing uh, use case, uh, we may have uh, four, five, six, seven um, uh, streams of data coming in. Uh, the, all these sensors, uh, you know, measuring, um, you know, or 10 even sensors that are measuring various things on a um, ongoing production uh, platform, uh, manufacturing platform. Uh, uh, does this apply easily? I mean, are there, uh, do you apply to each stream separately and look for a thing or th are there any, uh, 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 issues in defining events that involve uh, not just one stream, but, uh, you know, multiple uh, streams at the same time. Um, how does, how does it work? Yeah, Dr. Uh, so these transformers also have stu uh, studied on the multivariate aspects. Uh, that means there are many uh, dimensions or many variables that we have to consider. Uh, so, uh, when reading these research papers, I identified that uh, some of the researchers have not been able to fully capture the features of the multivariate uh, time series uh, in terms of the in modeling the their spatial and temporal dependencies. Uh, so uh, we also obviously have that challenge how on how to model the specific features in a multivariate time series. Yeah, it would also be a, a good uh, challenge in di direction that we would have to focus. Yeah, there may be some unique opportunity when uh, dealing with, uh, you know, multiple streams uh, and there is a dependencies across them. Uh, you know, so, I mean, what what hap what you observe from robot arm would also be observable by uh, camera and uh, some, some cases and maybe there is something interesting there. Okay, great. Um, you uh, done? Uh, uh, yeah. Amit, the first reference uh, that I just put in, uh -huh. uh, with the first reference I put in in the chat also deals with multivariate uh, time series. I and see. Uh, they showed that uh, the gradient boosting, for example, can do very good in uh, uh, multivariate as well. But it is a more complicated setting. Okay. Um, if I can add something to sort of future research, um, I think uh, this sort of work is great for sensor-based systems where there are uh, streams of data that are very regular um, at fixed intervals uh, where the data is synchronous, but where the information is asynchronous, event-based, uh, sort of real-world events, or where there are humans involved, then uh, this doesn't seem to work well. Uh, I mean, fundamentally, AI systems are stupid about time. Uh, they don't understand that uh, humans operate at different speeds than computers uh, and don't often deal with differences in real world events. So uh, there's an example of a robot rolling up to an intersection, looking both ways for traffic and then spending 10 minutes processing the images and deciding, okay, it's safe to cross the street. Um, that's sort of stupid. Um, so um, systems that involve human interactions, conversations and so on, uh, AI systems don't always know 
Um, how long to wait for a human to respond? Uh, what sort of uh, reasonable? Uh, is it a simple question requiring a yes or no answer or a very long question uh, that requires uh, you know, mathematical proof? Um, so um, I think for future research, basically the incorporation of knowledge is really needed to make uh, systems less stupid about time. Absolutely, Mike, and especially if you are going to explain your prediction. Uh, explaining prediction is extremely hard. Yeah, that may be another opportunity, uh, you know, if you have, um, uh, you know, not just the data, but modeling of the uh, situation, uh, modeling, uh, you know, something about like knowledge graph and uh, that, uh, is able to understand what's happening in a conceptual term tied to uplifting to a concept in a knowledge graph, then maybe we can uh, do the same thing we are doing with uh, explanation um, uh, in other areas. Uh, you know, I think explainability is a very big, um, very significant area of our interest in our knowledge-infused learning line of work. But uh, we'll see. Uh, that would be interesting. That, that, that may be a more nascent opportunity here, Chaturangi, than even with NLP, because use of knowledge graph with NLP is pretty uh, routine now, but I don't know how much it is with this kind of uh, data. So, okay, great. Thank you. Dr. Shab, yes, uh, I, find, I kept on researching whether there are knowledge graphs in time series, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, there was only one research I could find uh, that incorporates knowledge graphs uh, with time series, and uh, some of them have include raised the question on uh, how to model the time and the spatial aspect of time series in knowledge graphs. Uh, so they have stated that uh, representing time series as a knowledge graph would not be a good a solution uh, no, because, uh, yeah uh, it, the... the the issue is not uh time series and knowledge graph the issue is um uh so so for example you don't want to necessarily uh really create a knowledge graph embedding and uh, add to the data uh i think we should look for some other ways of doing it but for sim basically uh, when you find a particular set of data and you want to understand what they mean in terms of a real world event um, then uplifting it to the concepts in the knowledge graph is the uh, opportunity that you have. We'll talk about this uh, later on uh, when we uh, talk about our you know, smart manufacturing project and how we apply. But this is a kind of opportunity we look for where uh, there is not a lot of work and we can um, you know, make some of the early contributions. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, just wanted to... Um, uh, 